we're going to learn about SIP and NAT and how they play together and how they don't play together very well. So first of all, what is NAT? Well, NAT is Network Address Translation. This is where a device such as a router or firewall translates one IP into another. So like on the inside, we have 192.168.1.20, the outside 216.115, same thing down here, fourth octet is dot 21, fourth octet over here is dot 6. Along with NAT, which is simply translating one IP into another, we also have PAT. PAT is port address translation. This is where all traffic from the inside of the network is presented as the same IP in the outside, but from a different source port. So see, notice the outside address is the same, but the port that we are using between these two different devices, it's different. NAT and PAT work very well with normal web traffic. SIP though, that's a little bit of another story. You have to remember SIP is an application layer protocol. This is because what is listed in the headers and SDP may not match the actual IP packet. All right, so we have an invite that is going out here. The actual IP is coming from 192.168.1.20. But if we look down here at the C equals line, you know, it remains the same there. We send it to the outside, and while the packet has changed, and we're using port address translation, the actual SIP message and the SDP, they remain the same. So that is going to give us some issues. So here's a little bit of a walkthrough on some of these things here. We've got the invite going from the outside or from the inside. The IP packet, it flows over to the outside, flies all the way across the internet, hits the SIP server. The SIP server, it creates a response. It creates its own IP packet. Whee! It routes that over to the outside of the firewall, sends it onto the inside of it, and there we go. And that is how it started to flow. But the problem we're looking at is these two IP addresses. This phone is saying, hey, send me audio to 192.168.1.20. But the server is saying, okay, send me audio to 72.555. Now this phone is going to be able to send this traffic over here because this is just another IP out on the internet. We're going to go through port Andra address translation and all as well. Okay, well, what about the server? It will have no route to send this traffic. So what do you get from that? <gasps> One-way audio. Now, how do we fix that? There are a few methods that one can use to resolve that issue. Some of them are better than others. You can use a STUN server. STUN stands for Simple Traversal Utilities for NAT. It is defined in RFC 5389, and STUN is a simple protocol for discovering the public IP address. Let's look at that. So we're going to have a STUN request here. This phone is going to send it out. My source IP is 192.168.1.20. Uh, port 1234. We route that out to the outside of the firewall. The packet is now coming from 216.115.25 or 24593. Gets routed over to the stun server. Stun server processes that, makes a response, says, okay, I'm going to send this to 216.115.25. Nine, three. The payload is the same. That goes to the outside of the firewall. Now the firewall itself, or the router, it does a little look up here and it figures out who it needs to send it to. It says, okay, I am going to send this to the phone. But the packet, the destination of this was modified by the router or the firewall. So now that is being sent to 192.168.1.20 port 1234, but the payload has not been modified. So now 
This phone knows the public IP address based upon that response from the stun server because it says, okay, this is your public IP. It's 216.115, and this is the port that you are using. Right? So now when this sends a, a request out, we can modify the C equals line. We can modify our port. We can modify any other values up here that need to be modified to make this happy. And in that case, we send that IP packet out, send it there, IP packet comes back, and it routes back over to the phone. And we now have audio going two different ways because the phone is sending it all the way up to the SIP server IP. We now have traffic from the SIP server being sent to 216.115. This port, the firewall or router, turns that into 192.168.1.20 colon 1234 for the port. SIP ALG. An ALG is an application layer gateway. Modern consumer and prosumer routers have this feature enabled, and the ALG modifies SIP headers and the SDP before the packet is forwarded to the upstream device. So again, let's take a look at that. We got an IP packet, and we have our invite. You know, we've got the standard stuff, private IPs, everything listed in the C equals line. We send that up and out through our router or through our firewall, and the firewall or router it says, okay, I see this is SIP. I have inspected this packet. I know this is SIP, and I know that I need to change the C equals line, and I'm also going to change the VIA line and the contact header. Okay, it does that. And then, of course, that gets sent off to the SIP server, and hopefully everything as well. The problem with SIP ALG is most firewall vendors have an awful, 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 awful implementation of it. I have seen it break more things than I've seen it fix. It often fails to forward the SIP message to the NATed endpoint and it'll fail to forward RTP packets properly. So what's the point? Well, we often need to go in and disable it on firewalls. And a long time ago, I started to write a guide. It's now on VoIPEngineerTraining.com on various devices. You got like Linksys, SonicWall, Fortinet, there's a number of them, but I walk you through how you can go and disable SIP ALG, VoIPEngineerTraining.com. Go check that guide out. Now, a good ALG can behave badly if your service provider has an SBC capable of handling NAT. That could also be why I've seen so many problems, because normally I've worked at service providers with good SBCs like an Acme packet, and we want to see that traffic unmodified because the SBC is smart enough to figure out what it needs to do with it based upon the source IP via headers, C equals lines, and all those different things. Now, who has a good ALG implementation? This is not a sponsored thing. This is just my experience of who does this well. First one is Audio Codes. They have products called the Mediant Series. You got like a M500, M800. They are an enterprise level SBC. Cisco. Cisco typically can do this pretty well. Their uh, ASA firewalls handle it quite well. You can also use something called Cisco Cube if you want to pay for the licensing on that. Edgewater Networks, they have another good one. Local company here in Arizona, Simple WAN. The guy that founded this company used to own a VoIP provider. Therefore, he has added some things into his product to make sure that it works properly. And then we have Velo Cloud, and they're kind of running the, uh, the pack on software-defined WAN. SIP and NAT. Another solution is TURN. TURN stands for Traversal Using Relays Around NAT. TURN is built off a of stun, and it has similar behavior, except return RTP flows through the TURN server rather than direct. Let's look at that. So we've got this request packet going out. Here's our source. We, we send it to the outside, the outside. We change that to a different IP. This gets routed to a turn server. Turn then sends this response back. We, here's the payload and everything there is cool. All right. So now we send this request out. Let me go back here. 
we send the request out. Okay, all that stuff has been modified. The server, it gives us a 200 okay, everything's cool there. There's our IP packet, it goes out. We, that goes over to here, so here's our signaling. IP packet, it's routed back over here. Cool, now we have the media path. So the media from the UAC toward the server, it may or may not go through the turn server, but the return audio or RTP stream from the UAS, it is going to go through that turn server and it is going to have a new leg of it created. And then of course we go back through our firewall and everything gets translated through that. So turn guarantees communication in all NAT scenarios unless a firewall policy is blocking communication. One thing to kind of keep in mind is turn is getting used a lot with like WebRTC platforms. Now it's superior to stun in many ways, yet it has disadvantages. One, it has to remain in the forwarding path, it requires a lot of bandwidth. The turn server must remain available throughout the entire session. And my favorite solution is having an intelligent SBC that handles it and it just works. High-end SBCs like Oracle or Acme Packet use a feature called HNT or header NAT traversal to accomplish NAT detection and mitigation. In Oracle and Acme terms, the SBC looks at the IP datagram source and de uh, determines the actual IP if it matches the VIA contact or SDP sequels line. If it does not, the, SD, or the SBC manipulates headers and routes traffic to where it needs to go. And honestly, it works fantastic. I absolutely love the Oracle product line. Biggest downfall of that though, high-end SBCs are expensive. Usually only large enterprises and carriers can afford these. That is no joke. Two SBCs and a high availability setup with a few thousand concurrent session licenses can run you 250k or more. Now, as mentioned, these SBCs can still experience a problem if SIP ALG is enabled on the customer side. Aside from audio issues, NAT is prone to causing call control signaling problems as well. And this is often related to the amount of time that a firewall keeps a NAT pinhole open. Right, again, similar scenario. We've seen this a few times in this video. We've got this device. It sends a request out, register message, okay? A pinhole is created in that firewall. Boom. 60 seconds, the pinhole is open. We send this message outbound over to the SIP server. Okay, that's a register we get a response quickly, everything's cool there. 70 seconds later, an inbound call to the user is being sent from the SIP server. Now we're trying to use that exact same socket, so that same IP and port combination, but eh, too bad, that NAT pinhole is closed. How do we fix that? Well, method one, Often an ISP or someone that manages your proxy or back-to-back -back UAs will adjust the timer on the registration interval and they will set it to a kind of low value. You set to a low number to force register messages to constantly be sent, thus keeping the pinhole open. Method number two, port forwarding is configured on the firewall or router. Downfall to this is ports for RTP are typically going to be dynamic and you never know what it's going to use. Method three, you may have lucked out and have a good ALG running on your firewall and it will handle these requests properly. To summarize, NAT can cause RTP and signaling issues. Stun and turn, those are servers used to work around audio issues and along with signaling issues as well. SIP ALGs are often activated by default on consumer firewalls. Sometimes they work, but from my experience, you usually have to just turn them off. High-end SBCs work amazingly well to resolve NAT issues. They can even adjust the registration interval to make sure NAT pinholes are open for signaling traffic.